there it goes all right good afternoon mr rios we are so happy to have you here um mr rios is going to be sharing with us he did as we're in our unit of dealing with disasters he has been a missionary in several areas that actually had disasters so he's going to kind of share his life story with you and those missions ended up having a lifelong impact on him physically and emotionally so we're going to start off by letting mr rios tell us a little bit about growing up in puerto rico um, and what he wanted to be when he grew up yes um when i was a child well my family was very very poor uh, the most my dad made was $10,000 a year in 2000, and we are four brothers. My mom never worked, so I was the youngest. Mm. Our life was a little bit rough, but, well, we are strong, and we uh, fight for what we want. So um, when I was growing up, I always had in mind to be a Catholic priest. That's all I wanted in my life at the moment. When Did your family ready. support yes. that decision to be a priest? At the, at the beginning, no, because they thought it was going to cost a lot of money and, well, our economic situation was really bad. But then when I was, uh, when they saw that I was taking it very seriously, then they supported it, yes. Excellent. So you were in school, graduated from high school, and tell us about your path. My path, well, when I graduated from high school, I didn't went, I didn't go straight to the seminary because I said, well, if I'm going to be a priest, uh, it may not work. So I want to do something first because yes, experience is important, but education is important as well. So I decided to go to college, and I decided to do to make a de uh, to do a degree in business, and um, I also completed the degree in music, in voice, in singing. So uh, as soon as I finished my two bachelor's degree, I went straight to the seminary to be a priest. So you, your plan was to be a priest, Yes. but you got a college degree as a backup, which is super smart. We talk yes. about that a lot with athletes, that you know they should also go to college and get you know a degree, so they have a backup plan. So great job on that. Thanks. All right, so from our degrees in, mu in music and voice and business, we went on to the seminary. Yes, and then when I was in the seminary, I spent some time in the seminary in Puerto Rico. Uh, we, um, in, during all the time, it was like seven or eight years uh, that I was in the seminary, I um, got involved in pastoral work. Pastoral work is kind of the same thing as a mission, but internal in, in the area. For example, in Puerto Rico, we help prisoners in jails and their families to get involved as a community and to help them uh, get over the situation that they were going through. So like a mission at home? Uh, the, the, like a mission at home. Excellent. They call it in, in the Catholic Church, pastoral work. Yeah. Excellent. And then from there, um, you signed up to go with the um, work of the Pope, mission work. Yes. In, when I was in the seminary, I took a period of time to work in missionary work. Mm, uh, and there's a a missionary work of the Pope, its name in Spanish is Obras Misionales Pontificias, which is missionary work for the Pope of the Catholic Church. At this time, it was in 1999, it was John Paul II, the Pope. So uh, I decided to go for training to be a missionary. Uh, in this work, missionary work of the Pope, they have a, an intense training they do it here in the United States as well. In the diocese or in the state, they go to a diocese to have a training for several months to get ready to be a missionary. It's like living the experience before having the experience. So during this time, we learn how to say yes. We can never say no to anything. This people offer you because it's they're poor and they will feel bad if we say no to something that they offer to us that they work so hard they work with a lot of dedication uh, they will feel bad uh, we cannot do that we should always say yes to anything they need or they offer to us so this was kind of training before the mission so we have 
we are prepared to go and walk with the people in need. And one of the things that you told me that really surprised me was I... Coach Carrick Ford to the office, please. Coach Carrick Ford to the office, please. I was really surprised to find out that missionaries pay their own way out of their own pocket. I always you know, thought that somebody paid for all that, but tell us more about that and then how that affects the decision of where to be a missionary. Well, there are several ways to, be, to do missionary work. In the particular one that I did, which is the one with the pole, we had to pay for it. It's out of our pocket. So it's a, there's a lot of sacrifice. I had to work hard to obtain this money to pay for my mission to do this charitable work with the people because I love helping people. And well, this, this was the intention of the missionary work. And mm, yes, we had to cover for everything uh, that is to spend in the air, airline tickets, etc. Yeah. So because of that, you chose what country to go work? I went to the Dominican Republic, I chose it. They have in the missionary work for the Pope, they have different countries. The countries are countries that are in real need. They're very poor. And mm, they need people to support them emotionally and, uh, well, physically sometimes uh, mm, in different kind of situations. It can be in education, uh, health, etc. So um, I decided to go to the Dominican Republic because it was the, mo the, the most affordable. You know, Puerto Rico is next to the Dominican Republic, so it was cheaper. So because of my economical situation, well, I decided to go to the Dominican Republic. Plus, it was a good opportunity because it was recently devastated by Hurricane Georges. It was like... And we put a graphic up there behind Mr. Rios. Um, yeah. We'll talk more about that later. Um, but this is, you know, the disaster that he went to help with. Yes. Uh, it was after the disaster. The disaster was in September two, uh, 1998. Mm -hmm. I, by the way, in Puerto Rico was affected really bad by this. This is the worst hurricane. I have been in several hurricanes. I was, I was in Hugo in 1989, and I was in this one, this, these two Hugo, uh, mm, Georges have been the two wars that I have been present physically. Georges was a horrible experience. I thought we were going to die <laughs> because the house shake like a, a, an earthquake for hours. It was horrible. So, like we've been reading about in our textbook, that was a real true life disaster yes. that you were there for. So you were there to help those people and then you actually left the seminary when you kind of realized it wasn't really working out for you. And you went on to do kind of some what we would call, quote, real world jobs. What were those? Well, be before that, um, when I was a missionary, uh, we went to these cities. The, city, the city's name is San Juan de la Maguana. In this particular uh, web page in Wikipedia, you can find this story. San Juan de la Maguana was a city, small city in the Dominican Republic in the border with Haiti, which is the poorest part of the Dominican Republic. It was devastated by Hurricane Georges. A lot of people died. And we went and walked all this city and we saw the houses abandoned by the people because, well, they were not livable. A lot of people died. And it, it was a very, very hard experience to see that and see kids running, eating whatever. They ate mangoes most of the time. It was very sad. Um, it seems like when I was there, we had to, this is part of the training that, of the mission, we had to eat everything they eat. We had to live the lives that they live in this country. So we had to eat everything they eat if we had to take a shower, they didn't have water. We take a shower uh, in, in like in out in out bathrooms uh, with uh, the water that they collect from the rain or in rivers that were contaminated. And it seems like in one of those situations, in one of the rivers that I don't know that was contaminated, I got a bacterium in my brain. The bacterium was allocated in my brain for several years and I didn't know and well uh, 
I used to work for an architects and engineers company in Puerto Rico after I left the seminary. I left it in 2001. When I left the seminary, I found this job in an architects and engineers company. I left it in 2006 and I moved to Fort Lauderdale. I worked for, in Fort Lauderdale for a computer company, software company for seven years. When I was working there in 2011, uh, I remember that I went to the gym and I have a seizure. A convulsion and mm, I didn't know what was going on and they found out that I had an abscess growing in my head why because it seems like because of the contaminated water in this missionary work uh, mm, I got a bacterium so that big scar we see yes. in that picture there where you had to have brain surgery this is my head that is Mr. Rios' yes. <laughs> head. Um, that actual surgery was the, the result of your mission work. Yes. The bacteria that you somehow drank in, at some point probably had contaminated water or food. The doctors don't know, really. We'll never really know. So all that mission work, so you... Had two brain surgeries. Two brain surgeries. They removed a bone from my head. They removed an, an abscess that was growing in my head because of the bacterium that developed as an infection. And then, uh, this was my, in my first surgery. As you can see, it was fresh. Very so, fresh. Yes. <laughs> it has the uh, staples and everything. So, um, it was horrific. But so, did you have to do things like relearn how to walk? Did it do brain damage? It was, the doctors there were great. They did a great job. None of my motor skills were. Wow. I'm very grateful and this is one thing that I say to everybody we should be grateful for all we have do you think your mission work makes you more grateful having seen how people suffer my mission work and my life when I was a kid and everything that I have gone through because it's life we all have to struggle with something it's life we should be grateful because sometimes well you know we are in middle school and sometimes we get we have everything for granted and we think, we don't think all we have, we have much more than we deserve. Especially just Americans in general. We, yeah. we are quite, we are quite lucky human beings here. Sometimes we don't even realize it. There's a lot of people in Africa, in Asia, dying every single day, very young. And I you feel, came here, I'm sorry, you came here sorry. to Kentucky. Um, you had some friends here, and this seemed like a good place to kind of settle I, after all of the... <laughs> I love Kentucky. Kentucky is one of my favorite places ever. It's a beautiful state. The four seasons are great. People are amazing. And I love Jessica Middle School. Well, Mr. Rios, thank you so much Gracias. for coming to talk to us. We've been, of course, our unit is called Dealing with Disaster. And it's one thing to read about disaster, but it's a whole other thing to have really been there and seen it and to share that experience. So we really appreciate you recording this for us today. Thank you And very we much. love having you here at Jesse Clark. Gracias. Thank you.